Good morning, everyone. This is Leah Dixon in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia. I am here this morning for my regular Wednesday morning live. Um, I hope that this is working properly. I'm continuing to have some tech issues, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I've just actually lost my screen. That's very interesting. All right, so. Um, I'm not actually sure if this is running, but I'm going to go ahead and hope that it is. So actually, I'm just going to try one thing here to see if I can get, um, there we go. Let's see if I'm going to be able to see some comments. Oh, there we go. All right. I am seeing comments. Wonderful. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Ruth. So today I'm going to be creating with the Blossoms in Bloom um, stamp set and dies and I'm going to be using actually a whole bunch of um, different products so I'm going to switch you guys over to my desk screen and we'll get started all right so here is the blossoms and bloom stamp set that we're going to be using and because I'm using it with the dies today I am actually going to also be using my stamparatus so I don't use this a ton, but I do find that when I need to get things lined up, that this is absolutely the best tool. So um, to get started, I'm actually going to go back a step. I'm going to pull this off and show you how I actually lined this up. So in here, because this is a photopolymer stamp, I do have the foam piece that comes with the Stamparatus. And then I have added in um, a piece of the grid paper. You can buy that separately. And so it's actually not necessary for this card, but I do find that it helps in being able to line things up. So I'm going to grab a base here. So I always keep pre-cut. Good morning, Danielle. I always keep pre-cut bases. These are cut at four by five and a quarter. And I'll just show you how I lined this up. Um, so I grabbed this stamp set and I know that I want to keep the flowers and the leaves and everything on my page. And so um, the leaves do extend a little bit more on the left hand side than on the right. So I kind of put this so that my flower was going to be very close to my right hand side. Um, now, if you're totally, if you're still a little bit unsure, um, you can always do a quick cutout of the die as well. And so um, here's one that I have. And then you can kind of lay that over and just see where that die is going to fall in terms of the leaves once it matches up. So that, to me, is a really good fit for this card. And then whenever I'm stamping, I actually, I know lining it up in the corner makes it easier, but I do find that it's actually a better image that you get the more centered you can have it. So I'm going to actually put this so that it's just covering up that Stampin' Up! logo. So it's lined up in the two corners there with the Stampin' Up! logo. And then I'm going to pop my magnet down in a spot that's not going to get inky. And I'm going to close that. So now what I have created is an easy way to make a whole bunch of this card because I can now just continuously put um, pieces right here in this corner and do a whole bunch of these. Um, so I'm going to ink these flowers up today in Bermuda Bay. And so you guys, here we'll get it so that you're actually on the screen. So I always start with just like a quick rub, um, kind of gives a quick coverage and then I'll do some tapping, but I always look at it to make sure I haven't left any kind of like ink pad lines. I don't like seeing lines on my stamping. All right. And with an image this big, it's a little bit tough to not get them, but that seems to have been pretty good. All right. And then with that inked up, we simply 
close our Stamparatus, give it a little rub. This is great for stampers like me as well, who suffer like from arthritis and stuff I find in the mornings, my hands, I drop things. And so this just makes sure you don't accidentally drop your stamps on anything. Um, so yeah, there we go. Now I'm gonna leave that all set up because that way I can make a whole bunch more of these in different colors and stuff later. So I'm just gonna set that to the side all set up. And it's great for that kind of mass production as well. If you've got like, you know that you're gonna be making 20 of a particular card or something. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, I'm gonna do all my stamping first so I can put my ink away and not get anything inky, is I've got here two pieces of cardstock. One of them is Whisper White. This is cut at half of an inch by two and three quarters. And this one is gray granite, cut at three quarters of an inch by three inches. And I'm gonna pop this into my, oh, I should open it. This is my, oh, I don't actually remember what this one's called. Um, I think it's called the Pick a Punch. Uh -huh. I don't even have a catalog handy to check it out. Um, so this is new in our annual catalog. And, um, for those of you who are demonstrators and have seen the new catalog, do not be confused by thinking that they've gone and thrown this one into our new catalog. There's actually another double punch like this with the three layers. Um, and it is called a pick a punch, but I believe it's called a pick a punch banners. And it actually creates both the inverted banner that I like to create using my um, Taylor tag punch as well as a banner that goes out the other way, which is a little bit harder to achieve. So I may just have to grab that. All right, now with these, I did cut them a quarter of an inch different, but what I found was it still didn't make enough of a border. So I put that one in, I punched it, and then I put it in a second time and punched it again. That's just gonna help me shorten it up to the length that I actually want it to be at. Now when I'm doing these ones, I always do flip them over just to make sure that they line up because being so short and so thin, they kind of wiggle in the frame. So I always wanna just make sure that it's lined up the way I want it to be. There we go. All right. So now that I've got my two banners punched, put that away, there we go. So you can see that those are gonna line up very nicely now that I've done just a little bit of extra trimming. Um, now that I've got done that done, I'm gonna grab my Bermuda Bay ink again. And this time I'm going to grab the thank you sentiment from the Blossoms in Bloom stamp set. And hop on that. Oh, oh that was really crooked, so let's just flip that over. Wow. Uh, there we go. That was much better. Okay. So set that to the side. So that is all of our stamping for this morning. Now we're going to play around and get um, some dies cut to go with this. So what I have here is... Oh, did I not? Hmm. I didn't grab the piece I need. Interesting. Okay. Um, so I'll just put those papers. Actually, I'm going to put all of these papers off to the side. And I'm going to grab my big shot and some adhesive sheets. So here we go, I've got my Big Shot. Now, for those of you who you know, don't have one of these machines, um, some exciting news. On August 4th, um, the new die cutting machine is going to be available for demonstrators. And then I believe in September, it will be available for customers. about 
Okay, so here we go. So I have a piece of Copacabana and this has been cut just like a regular base, um, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm gonna pop this on here with um, the die on top and I'm gonna run this through. But now, because this one has so many little bits and everything, I'm actually gonna run it through like three or four times just to really loosen everything. All right, so pop that out. And of course, my plates are a little bit old, so um, it came out beautifully from the die, but it's all stuck to my plate. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work to remove that. Um, and let's see here. Come on. Oh, and pieces are flying. Okay, so you can see a lot of the pieces are stuck. That's okay. It actually kind of makes it easier for cleanup because I can just scrape it off to one side. All right. So these dies do have um, a ton of little bits. And some of you may be thinking, oh, she probably should have used the adhesive sheets. For this one, I'm not going to. This one's actually fairly easy to glue down. And um, so I'm just going to use liquid glue to put this one down. But for the layer that I'm going to be doing next, um, I'm definitely going to use the adhesive sheets. I'm just going to put that to the side for now. We're going to do all of our die cutting and then get this machine out of the way. All right, next piece is our very intricate piece and we're going to be doing that with a piece of whisper white and actually you know what i did this on purpose i wanted to show you guys how to attach these sheets so there's my old one this one's an extra piece it has the adhesive backing on it already so that's going to stay and get saved in my adhesive sheets folder all right, so I have a piece of Whisper White here at six by six, and I have a piece of um, adhesive sheet. So there's a tiny strip on one end, and I'm just gonna peel that tiny strip off and try not to get too much adhesive on my hand. Now with that tiny strip pulled off, I'm sorry you guys, yours will not say C6 on it. Mine is, um, Stampin' Up's old adhesive sheets, exactly the same design, just we're no longer working with Sussex. Um, so I'm going to stick that down on that one really skinny edge. Oh, I see here that I didn't trim this quite right. So I'm actually gonna trim this before I peel it because it will be way less sticky and way easier to work with. Okay, not perfect. Good enough. All right. So now I'm going to come back in and peel up the larger section, the larger edge. And what that's going to allow me to do is, oops, without you know, losing my whole lineup here, what that's going to allow me to do here is I've already got the one edge lined up. Hopefully I didn't lose that alignment. Oh, I did. Darn it. Um, so that should have made it easier. There, oh, I lost the alignment earlier. That's why it wasn't lined up right. Okay, that's good. So now what we've got is an entire adhesive sheet on the back of this. You can't really tell the difference. Um, but one side feels really glossy now because it's got that protective side on it. All right, so with that done, we're going to bring the big shot back into the screen. And we're going to pop this down just like we normally would. We're going to have the paper side up, though, and this, this covered sticky side down. And we'll pop this on. Now I'm going to have a lot of extra that I'll be able to trim off again. That's fine. Okay. And then we'll run this through a few times. And you can hear it's making a bit of a crackling noise. This is a bit of a thicker layer because we have the extra adhesive on there. That's totally fine though. And I'm going to run this through four or five times so that it sometimes has trouble getting through the second layer. There we go. All right. 
Now we can move that. Okay. So now I've got my foam here that comes with um, your take a pick roller tool. And so this one lifts off of the die plates much easier though. That backing doesn't allow it to stick to the plates. So I'm now going to take this out of the frame, but I'm going to keep the die on here with, um, with my paper and my adhesive. And I'm going to grab my roller brush. You guys can grab the take your pick tool roller brush tip. And on top of the sponge, I'm just going to start to roll. Right over top of the die, though, I find that helps me not end up creasing my paper because um, the die itself is protecting the image. We're just popping out the bits that don't belong. Okay, so now I can flip that over and see how it's going pretty good. And I can toss those off to the side. This is why I do it in a case, because then at the end I can just take my case and empty it into my recycling bin. Alright, there we go. Keeps the mess all in one place. Alright, some of these larger ones are really close to coming out. You can see though, it didn't quite cut through the backing, the part that protects like so that the sticky's not exposed. I'm not too too worried about that because um, when I do peel the backing off those pieces aren't stuck and they will come out. Just a few more and then whatever doesn't come out this time around I will get my um, paper piercer and I'll work on doing the rest. Okay so now my paper piercer and I am still keeping it in the frame as much as I can just to help maintain the shape of this. So this is kind of the boring part. This is this is the tricky part about using intricate dies. Alright so for the rest of this I am going to actually take that out of the frame. Put that down and now I can really see what I'm doing and some of these just fall away now that the frame is gone. Um, now, with these little itty bitty ones, the problem here is that the backing didn't come off, but it did cut through the paper, so I'm actually going to poke from the back. And even if I can't get the backing off, I'm hoping to get those little paper bits to move. Um, so we can even like kind of dig them out. Um, we just don't want them sticking in places that we don't want them. And we go to attach this. Yeah, as long as the paper part's gone, I don't care about the backing. Okay. And just a few more. So, yeah, as I was saying before about the die cutting machine, um, this die cutting machine um, that's coming out is similar to our current one, but can compact up a bit more for travel. And there will be a mini version available at a later date, not yet. Um, so if you're looking to grab your um, die cutting machine and get a smoking deal on it, um, you can actually sign up to get your starter kit. And then you'll actually get a 20% discount off of all of your future purchases. So the starter kit's an awesome deal. It's $135, no shipping, no taxes in most parts of Canada. Um, BC for sure. Um, and so for that $135, nothing extra, you actually get $165 worth of product. And so you could actually sign up now and then in August when the machine becomes available, um, you can grab that with a 20% discount. Um, I can't remember the exact pricing, but I do know that it's over the $165, so you can't actually add it as a starter kit item, unfortunately, because um, the starter kits are kind of like the price is right. You have to get $165 worth of product and not even a penny more. Um, so they don't let you just like pay the difference or anything. Um, yeah, so. That is one way to snag yourself our new die cutting machine extra early.
and I'm going to be grabbing one because I keep losing the handle of my current Big Shot, which, I mean, I've had it for a really long time, so it's it's done me well, but it's time for a new one. I keep worrying that this one's going to break irreparably soon. All right. And that's all the little bits on that one. Now the other one that we did is much faster. The bits inside are much larger. And so even without the dye, I'm just gonna do a quick roll here. Um, because I'm doing this on the sponge, it's actually, um, oh, apparently I have something to do here. Just get a bunch of notifications. Um, these actually pop out really nicely. There we go, last one. Yeah, if you don't have a roller brush and these um, foam mats, they are definitely worth the investment. All right. Oh, now let's see. Sorry, guys. I just noticed my comments are not scrolling. How strange. Oh, good morning, Stacy. All right. So I've got this piece here in our Copacabana, and then I have this piece here, and I just got to kind of twist it around to see which way it goes. This is my what, um, my whisper white piece. Now this one has the adhesive, so I'm now just gonna peel the backing off. All right. I'm trying to remember which way I decided it went. Uh, so as you can see, when I peeled that off, the parts that didn't pop out just kind of left with it. So I've got a really nice image here now. And then I'm just gonna slowly start at the bottom and line that up on a couple of the leaves. Once I get it lined up on two or three leaves, then I'll press it down and kind of hold it. All right, and then we're just gonna slowly continue along, laying this over top of our flowers. Now, if it doesn't end up perfect, we've got very forgiving colors here today. Um, there we go. It's kind of one of the reasons I like doing the monochromatic or very, you know, all light tones or something because then any, any mismatch doesn't show up so much. All right, there we go. I'd say that was a pretty good job though. So I'm going to grab all of our other card pieces now, bring these back in here. And the next thing to do is to actually put this over top of here. So you can see we're getting like really multi layered coloring here. Um, you could do this with like a whole mix up of colors and that would work really well as well. So I'm going to flip this over, grab my liquid glue and do a very thin coating. Now, I mean, you could use your adhesive sheets for this part as well. And then this would just slap down so quickly. Um, but for me, this, these have a lot of big spaces to put either glue dots on or liquid glue. Um, we could probably even get in here with seal and use some seal on here. Um, so I'm not gonna be too worried about it. All right, there we go, three more. And I'm not gluing the whole thing, I'm just getting some key points so that I have no edges that are kind of gonna flop around on me later. over and now for this one I find looking at the centers of the flowers helps to get the initial placement pretty accurate and then you can just do a little twist and turn here and there if you need to to cover up anything else. All right. There we go. So with that done I am now going to grab my seal I'm actually grabbing my seal plus because I've left my seal upstairs from last night's crafting out on the patio. And so we'll just use seal plus. Seal plus I actually find is easier to use than seal. Um, I actually never checked to see if there's a price difference. If there isn't, I think I would just go with seal plus for everything. Maybe a little bit of an overkill in terms of how strong the hold is, but it's so easy to use. It's just lovely. All right, now pop this on. So I've just put that onto a gray granite base and that gray granite base is cut at 
let's see, four and an eighth by five and um, five and five eighths, I think. Basically, we're just going to be um, an eighth of an inch smaller than our card front. Okay, so that's going to go on there nicely in just a moment. First of all, though, we're going to attach some ribbon. So I'm going to get a piece of um, gray granite shimmer ribbon, and I'm going to cut it just a little bit wider than um, our card front. And then to keep adhesive from getting everywhere, I'm just going to flip our card front over and actually use my seal plus on the back of the ribbons. Now, I do always use seal plus when I'm putting it onto ribbons. And then I'm going to line this up and put it right across my card front, tucking those ends under and holding those in place. All right. Um, now, I will use some more of that in a moment, but first of all, I want to get these labels on here. So let's see, which one was my straight one? I think that's, that's my straight one. So I'm going to attach this white piece to my gray granite piece. And then I'm going to put more seal on here. And I might even do two strips so I can get really close to the top and bottom of that because I'm going to be putting it onto my card front over top of the ribbon. And so I want it to kind of stick top and bottom on either side of my ribbon and, of course, stick to my ribbon. Okay. Now that's kind of popping up a bit at the bottom, so I may not have done the best job at getting in there. So I'm going to grab just a couple of mini glue dots and pop under there with them. Oh, come on, they're sticking to me. Maybe I should have done one at a time. All right. And the second one. When I put these under, I can see clearly where this is attached to the ribbon and where there's no ribbon in place. So then I can come in, peel off those backings maybe yes come on so this is the tricky part about working with something over top of a ribbon and not using like dimensionals in the corners there we go all right so because i've used the seal plus i know that this is very securely attached to my ribbon um and somewhat securely attached to my card front. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I've got just a scrap of the gray granite shimmer ribbon and I'm just going to come in here and tie a knot. Now this ribbon's kind of funny. It's a very stiff ribbon and um, so I had been trying to tie bows with it and it just was not working for me. It was very chunky looking so I didn't like that. So we're just going to go with a knot but I want my knot to kind of sit even where I want it and to have the nice flat surface so there we go kind of just play with it and fiddle around and then I can trim up the ends should be using better scissors for that but there we go all right not bad so trimmed up edges now we're going to flip this over and use some more seal plus and this time I would definitely use Seal Plus or liquid glue because this is a lot of layers now, a lot of weight that we're going to be attaching to our card front. I do like the seal because when you get some on the table, you can just kind of rub it away. There we go. And one more strip. And then this is going to get attached to our card front. Do make sure to line it up quite well before you press down. All right. There we go. Not sure what I had the extra piece of white for. All right. Now with that all attached, put my lid on my seal. And I'm going to grab some embellishments. And for today, the embellishments that I'm going to use 
are the frosted and clear epoxy. Um, oh, that's not what they're. Um, frosted and clear epoxy droplets is what I'm going to use today, and I'm going to actually use some frosted ones. So I'll just throw a couple on here and a couple of the smaller ones. All right, there we go. So that is our card all finished. Thanks, Janice. Yeah, I really like these um, Blossoms in Bloom. Using the stamp set by itself is really, really easy. And then um, using the dies is, I mean, it's not hard. It's just a little bit time consuming because um, they're quite intricate dies and so picking all of that stuff out but um, it creates such a beautiful look on a card so thank you so much for joining me this morning and um, yeah take a look at my website I'm going to be posting blossoms and blooms cards all week so I hope you enjoy seeing those and have a great day bye everyone